happened, what things mean, um, how do you find not just information and knowledge, but knowledge and wisdom, I suppose, too, what, what that actually means. Um, I was thinking that it struck me as the, the Western system starts with the whole mode of inquiry. From an Aboriginal point of view, everything starts with land. Mm -hmm. And you might say that, well, how on earth can you compare you know, the activity of inquiry with land? You know, one is solid, you're walking on it and so on, and inquiry is asking why. You know? um, and it just, it just struck me that um, for Aboriginal people, that, um, everything begins with land. It tells you um, why. So you, there's actually, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, I don't know all the languages, obviously, uh, but a lot of the languages, there's no original word for why. There's no, no actual word for why. Um, so it's uh, actually said, uh, uh, you, you, if you want to know things, you, you are either through the narratives or stories or ritual or relationship and so on. But of course, in the end, it's the land that tells you, tells you what things mean, really. So in other words, all meaning, uh, arises out of land, your relationship with land. Um, I don't know if that's a bit all over the place, but I, I don't think um, Aboriginal people would have thought too much about um, theoretical kind of um, assumptions and trying to find out things through that. But but the, I, I saw that as inquiry, you know, and it's a it's an open-ended thing. It just goes, you know, it's just like an explosion. Where on earth do you start? You have to start on some path. Or or whatever, um, and it's very much an individual thing too. You know, you're you're an individual. You're looking for you're looking for knowledge. You're looking for a path. Um, whereas for Aboriginal thinking, I suppose everything starts with relation relationality, with the relationalist ethos. Absolutely everything. Um, so between humans and land, between between humans and the one, the relationship between humans is always contingent on that relationship between humans and land. And as for wisdom, I mean, I think Aboriginal people are extremely, really grounded, you know, they, they understood only too well that not everybody grows wise with age, you know. <laughs> not everybody. So wisdom is a kind of, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's all to do with a whole range of other things, not just, not just sort of growing older, but experience. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But um, quite often experience sort of is an after the fact thing, you know. People don't start out with it, you know, it's a, or you're searching for it and if you thought you found it, you know, you have, probably haven't found it or, or whatever. Mm. Sorry, that's... No, that's all good, that's great. Yeah. I've got a lot more to ask you on the question of land, um, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Just, I guess, put that to you too, Mel. I mean, maybe start with the question of what you see as wisdom, that whether or not strategy has played a big role in the kind of philosophy that you've engaged in. Yes. Um, sometimes um, with, maybe with a group of young people coming up into their first philosophy uh, year, uh, I've used a um, description of the role of philosophy trying to build on everyone's experience. So I'll just give that a go and to, to, to share what I can use as, an uh, as a, as a <coughs> perspective on philosophy as a subject. Um, we begin life with, um, from birth and as little people, uh, with a range of experiences and uh, I take it they begin to fall into groups around the kind of experience that belongs with that bundle and the kind of experience that belongs to that bundle and getting a bit more age might uh, join an organisation outside the household like Scouts or Guides just for example and uh, and there's a whole language that belongs to that and a sporting club and a whole language that belongs to the sport and so on. And uh, to proceed in life you need to find a way to relate the vocabularies and the rules and the behaviours that belong to each of these bundles, uh, some, some descriptions that can pass between them and, and describe the lot. And I think that philosophy is like this in respect 
for its desire to find a, a very general, the most possible to you or to this group that you're working with, to, the, the most general dis description of uh, the real that you experience uh, that you can and that somehow finds, a, finds an umbrella vocabulary through which all your experience can be linked. Uh, let's suppose. Now, uh, I really agree strongly with what Mary was saying. I hope I uh, get you right, Mary, but uh, yeah, please correct me if I don't. But uh, I think that <clears throat> then you may end up with thinking that there are some things that need doing or need changing and so on. And strategy is about where to enter. That was in concept, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, to your, your, your way to enter proceeding with that shift that you want to create uh, and how do you decide on the strategy, how do you decide on what's uh, close and doable, it's, it, it, it is that, it, it's just that, it's what's close and you can see the way to get this little bit done or this entree uh, forced and, and uh, that's the way I'd see strategy in that second group and philosophy in the first group of trying to understand uh, the relatedness of reality. I, I was going to say, with um, uh, one book I read a long time ago, um, was uh, Peter, Peter King Boys. Um, oh, God, I forget that. They're from, from Australia, South Australia. Oh, do you? Can you remember? Sorry, my friend up there. <laughs> Do you remember the name of it? King Boys. Peter King Boys. Something about culture. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's about Aboriginal. Uh, but the, the, the main point of it is, um, I'll remember it afterwards, um, is that it struck me back then, way back then, that one of the best ways of understanding <coughs> Aboriginal, not just culture, history, thought, everything, uh, was through philosophy rather than anthropology. I really, I really thought that, you know, uh, it, it, it told me that. And why is that? And why, why, sorry. No, why no, through philosophy? Oh, why, sorry, sorry. Um, because um, it leads to um, not just the, uh, you, you know, um, well, there's two aspects, uh, as I understand it, that, you know, the um, idea of world and the world view, global world view, you know, I, I, I like that rather than uh, uh, the nature uh, trying to study like the, the, the nature of qualities or uh, things, objects, events, propositions, whatever, you know, trying to understand and delve into the nature of those things. Um, but, uh, so that, that sort of um, <coughs> informed me, but um, what I really liked about it, and looking at other people's philosophies too, is that it um, helps to like cultivate and give poise or something like mm -hmm. that to your mind. And I, I thought at the time that it's exactly what um, settler society means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> settler societies, old old cultures, they kind of have it, you know. What I mean, a poise of uh, a cultivated mind. When I say cultivated, I don't mean the snobby kind of sense, but a, a, a lightness and um, a great depth of the thinking. Um, the, the not just an idea or ideas. But um, it helps you to be like, for example, um, uh, subtlety, subtle thinking. It's definitely something that um, settler societies, all of them, I mean, I'm talking about America and Canada, you know, New Zealand, Australia, I don't know about the other cultures, the other older, you know, non English speaking um, um, uh, places. But um, and anyway, that first book, that led me on that way to understanding other cultures too, but not just other cultures and their ideas, but also things like why something like colonialism and imperialism happen. Um, and not just how can people be so cruel and, and that kind of thing, but how do people think that you can gain security by dominating all around you, you know, and dominating others? Because it does exactly the opposite actually. It increases their insecurity actually. And for Aboriginal people, it's just the other way completely. It is strategic, and strategy is a long-term thing. Um, to me, tactical, the difference between um, tactical thinking and strategic thinking, you know, tactical thinking is very short-term, 
and it struck me as I progressed in my reading and under, trying to understand things, um, is that, uh, I'm sorry about this, but a warlike people have to be very good at tactical thinking. Mm -hmm. They're not all that fashion on strategic thinking, which is very, very long term. And Aboriginal thinking is, is exactly like that. Um, um, looking at that, uh, the, the, the key, one of the key things is where does, you know, everything comes back to security. Really, security for a whole group of society. I mean. Security. How do you gain this security? In the Aboriginal thinking, it seems like is is in extending your relations, extending relationship. So relational, the relational ethos, rather than a survivalist ethos. A survivalist ethos tells you the world is a very hostile place. You know, the whole world, the environment, the world of the environment, nature, um, social, political, other philosophies, other religions, and so on and so on. So it's a survivalist. Ethos. So not, not, I'm not talking about just plain, straight survivalism. You know, you're, you, you know, dying of thirst in the desert. You know, you know, you don't want to phone up a friend or have a conversation. You want a glass of water, of course. <laughs> you know, so, so straightforward survivalism. That's different. But survivalist ethos, which sees hostility around, and you know, all those old sayings about you know, get them before they get you, or, you know, and so on and so on. Uh, either on a personal level or on a group level or on a big national, international level. You know, you, you have to dominate your space or place and so on. And so, on. so I think the Aboriginal people, I think that is really where that, that wisdom comes from, is that they saw, if you want real security, it, it lies in extending relationship, the relationality. And that's not, not meaning to be good, it's not humanitarianism either, it's nothing to do with that. It's nothing to do with joining hands and singing Kumbaya and etc. Um, it really is establishing this relationship between people and land and, and then between people. You know? so, so that you, you understand and practice a way of relating actually. I'll just tell you a story, sorry. Mm -hmm. you know? um, this story down home um, is of um, uh, a lot of people, are, uh, people people in Ireland break, um, uh, sorry, um, f um, work out a relationship with dolphins to earn fishery. Well, our lot did that down, down the coast and all around the coast. Um, so it's, uh, it's sort of like a relationship. It is a relationship, actually, with uh, nature. So that's what they did. But in the one dreaming story was where a man and his family, they were doing this, um, heard the f fish in uh, that work, been working, heard the, the, the dolphins would have heard the fish in put all the fish on the, what's in it, uh, you know, on the beach, and then part of it would be given back to them in payment, you know, back to the dolphins, the dolphin mob. They'd, be, they'd get their payment in this uh, certain part of the catch, and everything was okay. But one day, he didn't do that. They just took all the fish, all the whole lot, you know. And uh, he didn't get struck by lightning or anything like that. What happened was that the dolphin mob just simply went away. They went away and they never came back. You know? I mean, they were there, but they ignored the people. You know? Kind of thing. So, in other words, it, you could see it as a moral thing, like, oh, well, he should have shared, and you know, should be, you know, that's what happened. But really, he he had a relationship which was like a partnership, and the idea is to keep you extend your relations. Otherwise, if you don't, then you have lost that opportunity, and maybe for good. So it's actually constructing, constructing it. So constructing strategies like that, and that's like lawful behaviour.